what's good? It's your girl, Takuisha Jones, a.k.a. Killer Queen T, a.k.a. Blackout a.k.a. Please don't sit up for that. Come over here, a.k.a. Ooh, I ain't gotta be so long, a.k.a. Why you got so many questions? Okay, so y'all know today is a male Venus therapy. Okay, that's where we at. When I was a child, I one day realized what death meant. I remember that for a long time, I did not want to go to sleep. Because I was afraid that if I closed my eyes, I would never open them again. But life is so full, and we carry so much through it, that I ended up pushing that one worry aside. Okay, you just watch the space shuttle go up, go up, go up in the sky, okay? You know what I'm saying? <coughs> I was always busy. I wanted to overcome challenges, challenges, reach new goals, the peak of it all, was when I fulfilled my dream of going into space for my first mission. Also, oh, he he didn't watch it. He was on the okay, boom. Okay. From there, as I looked at the earth, at the earth, an unfamiliar feeling rose within me. I still find it hard to describe in words, but that view that view hypnotized me, awakening a new kind of conscious within me. Okay, don't be weird now. Aldrin, close your eyes. We are going to explore that new conscious, that emotion that you have yet been unable to explain. Now, as you remember that feeling, visualize an object, anything would do. What do you see? I see a fish boat. It's full of fish and it's floating in the dark. Are you one of those fish? No, I'm the only one that is outside of the boat. From where I am, I can see that it's lost in the middle of nowhere and how only a fragile little, a, a fragile layer protects it from the deadly emptiness. But if you are outside it, how is it possible that you are alive? Because being able to see it makes me realize that I am also in a fishbowl. Oh, boom. That's deep. Y'all see that? He in a fishbowl watching another, another fishbowl. She probably is watching another fishbowl. Just, just to make it deeper. But just drop it down in the comments. Drop it down in the comments. <clears throat> We're doing an overview effect. Our mission was to replace a, a Lithonium battery and carry a series of experiments in the lab. However, weeks before the launch, we lost contact with the station. Soon after, a breakdown in the... Okay, y'all probably like, squeeze. we already know how this story gonna go. You know, something gonna break onto the ship. Something gonna break onto the space, ship, the space, space station. They gonna have to fight it. Uh, he gonna probably be the only survivor. It's gonna be sad. Okay. Don't why y'all jumping ahead? Let's just get this right of a chance. Let's get a right of a chance, y'all. Let's, let's not jump. Let's not jump. Oh, yes. And the MBSU device damaged several of the station's power channels. Okay, now they got shit this broke. Repairing the damage became my priority if we wanted to carry out our original mission. When I returned to Earth, something was not right. Ooh, so, something got in his body. Something got in your body. I felt that something had changed. Something got in his body. That something, in fact, was me. I had changed. Reality did not seem consistent anymore. It was like the world around me was constructed of cardboard. Damn, everybody look fake. Love you, babe. You look a little fake right now, but I love you. You look a little cardboard. Otterin, can you explain what happened out there? Yeah, look, tell, tell me what happened. Commander Joseph Conrad had been on the space station for almost a year and was made aware of our arrival prior to being held in the commando in recent weeks. However, when we arrived, the only humanoid being we saw was Odox, the station's medical assistant robot. Why are we being so comfortable around robots? We trust them? Guess what's robots? Let me know in the comments. The commander was to greet us, but there's no sign of him on the whole station. And now we discover a perplosion unit is missing. Then surely he meant to fix the damage by himself. Really? He said, wow. He clearly did not succeed. Wow. What? Otterin, you almost have it. 
So you just, you just, you just put him out, you just send him out there? Just a little more. You did it. The power is back online. Okay. A bright light. What the fuck is you just, what is you floating to the, you floating to the light? Okay, he found somebody. Juliet, I found him. I see the commander. Oh, that's the commander just floating up. He did? Oh, he did. Why would you bring him back on the ship? Why? Do not. You're saying you guys just got to let him die? I don't know. I feel like maybe you should. We should put him in a bag. Oh, he did already. Juliet. But what did he to him? Oh, my goodness. How? I'm just teeth. No, I'm in his mouth. We covered, we covered the commander's body with the intention of getting that horrible image out of our minds. So why did you put it in our minds? That's petty. Look at you, Ryder. Being petty already out the gate. Then you gonna, you better show us him slip, them zipping that damn bag up. Let us know the shit really popped off. Without a moment, we took advantage of the fact that power had been restored. We contacted the Mission Control Center to relay the terrible news. Mission Control. This is Juliet on board. The International Station. At the docking, after docking, we found no one on board. We have since recovered Commander Joseph Conrad's lifeless body. Mission Control. Do you copy? There's no internet either. Oh my god. Wait, what is this? Did you find something? It seems there are some video recordings here. Click. This is my 32nd day on board. The space, the space station. I'm recording the video, these videos to aid in the studies of the psychological consequences on humans due to prolonged isolation in space. Let's open the last one. Maybe they give us a clue about what happened to him. So you're just going to skip to the last one. How many is there, first of all? As much as I have tried, I have not been able to find a rational explanation for this nightmare. I tried to communicate with Mission Control, but for days the radio has not worked. Every day, things are getting worse, and I can't take it anymore. Okay, it's a robot. I am a man of science, and saying this goes against everything I believe. But it is, it is, it is, it is, it is as if this station were alive, as if it had a heartbeat of, as it, as if it had a heart of its own. His heart is at ninety-eight percent. And to stop it from beating, I must halt its power at the source. 99. I need to damage an MBSU device and put an end to this once and for all. Ugh, it look human. Ugh. The time was funny. Tom, so he just wants to be a big real boy. So the commander caused this damage? Caused the damage? In the end, he found out what happens when you spend too much time Isolated in space. You lose your mind. Really? I don't believe that's it, my homie. Aldrin. We all float up here. Break the fishbowl and we will be free. Aldrin. Oh, hell no. Nah. He woke up too calm. He woke up too calm. You wake up to a motherfucking, uh, motherfucking robot looking human like in your motherfucking face. That's your reaction? This is your reaction? Just. Hi. Like, hi. Like, you want to say, hi. No. No. Ah. Okay. Aaron, are you all right? Yeah. Hello. I'm Odox. What's your name? Did you put it there? No way. I was sleeping when you cried out. So how would it get there? Nice to meet you. No way. I suppose bringing the power online again... Put Odax back into operation. Oh no, break that motherfucker up. Odax, please go back to your base. Clink, clink, clink. Oh no, it's the way he go down the hall for me. I'm just saying, he going down the hall like he tried, like he a human. He waving his arms and mm -mm, it just look weird. It just look weird. I'm not. Mm -mm, mm -mm, it's weird. It's fishy. Okay, then they show is the mouse dead? Please know the mouse be dead. What a mess. Everything is dead. Okay, it's dead. All right, cool. 21. 
22. We doing subs in this joint. We looking nice. Nice amount of sweat on our body, you know? Mmm. Hmm. I said that mm, just in time, didn't I? I thought, I thought I was reading, but that was what I, that was me. He said, what? This, see, this thing being creepy. This thing is stalking us, but being creepy. This thing is stalking us, man, but being creepy. Is he, is he? Man. Why do you think that childhood memory about death has returned? What is it that scares you about death? I'm not afraid to die, nor do I fear any suffering that may lead up to it. It's something else. Boing. It's not a system that worries me. Jump, Dad. His dad is jumping. Every time I think about it, every time I try to imagine that I, I cease to exist, I get a feeling of vertigo. It's as if I had jumped and find myself heading to a place outside of everything I have known, everything I have believed. It's, it is a place where time does not make sense, where space does not exist, and where I can see our existence as a simple flash. Dang. What do you feel when you see that flash? Yeah, what do you see? Nothing. Because emotions only make sense inside the fishbowl, and I am no longer in it. Odox? What are you doing here? Crash. Ah! Great, baby, fuck about. Step not completed. Resuming the ink the anchor session, the increase in the Rodex Ambonushes. What? Nigga, no, you did not come back alive time about soon you finna destroy everything in this bitch. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, whoosh. Ah Step not completed. Grab. I know your stuff was not to kill her. So you killed Buddy. You killed him. No. Please. Go back to your base. Please. Odox. Cancel the procedure. Woo. Foosh. Dud. Crash. Aldrin. What the hell just happened? How the fuck am I so, supposed to know? Like, make it make sense, bro. Aldrin. Reach, reach! Oh my God! Oh my fucking God! He just murdered her. Odox just murdered Shorty. Odox just murdered Shorty. Odox just murdered Shorty. Even though Julia faded right in front of me, her painful death did not evoke any feeling in me. Oh shit! Step completed. Because right now, he over there looking like a robot. I ain't gonna stunt. His ass over there. <laughs> Y'all like, so he's what? Yes, I think look at him over there. Dropping in the comments, you think he feeling? Nigga, geek, gape mouth. Dang, he ripped that motherfucker to shreds, did he? Ever since I picked up that strange signal, the radio had stopped working. The next day I noticed something was not right, and I felt that the station had changed. It was as if light and sound behaved differently here. Soon after, I began to feel the presence of someone else, but I, not, but I did not see anyone. However, the other night I woke up to a nauseous ink spell. It hung in the air, surrounding me. Screech. I went to the bathroom to try and rid myself of that stench. Okay, where you going, homie? On the way, I saw someone at the end of the hall staring at me. You going down the hall? No! Don't go down the hall, homie. Don't go down the hall, homie. It's the thing. He's not a person. He just got a mask on. It's that I approached him slowly. Don't approach him. Don't approach him until I can see his face. No! It was Aldrin, the astronaut who, had, who was to arrive at the station soon. Oh, what? Ah! Dun, dun. It is as if the station were alive, as if it had a heart of its own. Dun, dun. Aldrin, open your eyes. 
You always had something inside you that you were unable to explain. Something that others cannot relate to. When you went to space, new information awakened that in an act, in an intimate capability in you, offering you a new perspective. It is called the overview effect, or as it is sometimes likened to Savika, Savika, Tepiki, Samaduha. Yeah, they just made some shit up right there. What I have done has been to help you enter that state and to develop it. What, what you mean? What you have done? You up here giving me drugs? Oh, hell no. I just, I'm being so confused how you just let your therapy be like, yeah. I'm finna give you this, I'm finna give you this drug real quick. What the fuck you? What? I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. I'm not ready. Can I smoke some Mary Jane before we do this? What are you talking about? Auden, you never came back home. You are still on the station. Are you serious with me right now? Why are you doing this to him, Melvina? Are you shocked? Are you lost? If you lost and you just clicked out this video, then you will never be found again. How how should you know what happened? You stayed all the way here now. Come on, stick it out with me. I'm sticking it out. I didn't say, okay, you know what? I'm going to just get this to y'all. Click. Because... <laughs> I'm with you right now. What's going on? What's popping? But it's Melvina. And you know, we got to get deeper in your mind and make you feel like this some type of way. Maybe he is back still on the station. Thump, thump. Okay. Where the fuck is he? Where am I? Thump, thump. Okay, keep walking. I can't really explain it. I see wires. Is this? I can't really tell. Is this flesh on the walls? Niggas not really. Fa it's not really phasing him. Juliet, you know we we know she she ain't lying no more. She, what you mean? What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? She's just pointing to this this thing. What is this? You want me to go in there? Uh uh. I know I'm emotional and shit. I can't really. I ain't really supposed to be feeling nothing, but you know I'm probably gonna say I feel some type of way. Okay, okay. This is it's the seat. We just sat in the seat. Is it about to clink, take off space? Every time I try to imagine that I have ceased to exist, I get a feeling of vertigo. Okay, are you imagining that you cease to exist? And finding myself heading to a place outside of everything I've known. Everything I have believed. Okay, are you going to go back home? Come on. Oh, shit. You have to jump, honey. Oh, jump, dad. Oh. Okay, where are you going? Jump. Oh, you jumped out the... What? By the end, he was nothing more than a fish. Oh, they just played us. They just... Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Ah! 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 Mm. Mm. Yeah, bitch. I know. It's time. You're like, you was aggressive with that bitch, right? You know it's going to be flagged. <laughs> Please, work with me here. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let me... The story, Arderin has always had the ability to know that there is some palpable, palpable reality beyond his own. He believes there is a place that has nothing to do with what we know. The man, this is just, this was just a fish story, y'all. This was just a fish story. At the end, it was just a fish. Fish jumped out the fish bowl, and it, um, you know, fish without water, suffocates dads, pretty much, you know. He, when he travels to space, he becomes aware of the first fish bar, Arf. Being alive outside of it makes him understand that there is a fish, a second fishbowl space. Melvina helps Art and span on this idea, focusing on it at a different times and bringing him closer to this place nobody has seen. It is a place not governed by time or space. As such, the time and space around the Arden are warped. That's the reason he has been seen by the commander when he had not even reached the station yet. This place Arden can sense is also a place where there is no room for human 
identify individuality or emotion. For that reason, the closer Arden is to jumping from the last fishbowl, the more he loses his humanity. But in the end, he was nothing more than a fish and doesn't survive the jump from the last fishbowl. Melvina does not achieve her hidden goal, and after leaving her office, the wheelchair comes to pick her up. <laughs> Everybody is thirsty. Like, what happened to the therapist's house? Like, you remember the therapist was about to go at it. In fact, Otis is one of the ways Melvina tested Aaron by assessing his transformation when... When, when, I guess. <laughs> when he killed, um, Julia. Okay. <laughs> oh, you petty. I can't even really go on with that. Hold on. Let me... Okay, so this video is being marketed wrong. I'm not going to make it a kid video because it's Melvina. But, you know, I am going to put a kid story at the end. No. No, because, I mean, it would be pointless for me to be like, yeah, the story, the kid story is at, the, at this part. And then it would be, like, real short. So, no, don't worry about it. First story we're going to do is Alf, the great Alfonso. Brian and Alf were watching TV together. Brian has just seen something very exciting. Wow, Dad, Brian calls to Willie. Look, the circus is in town. Can we go? Please, please, please. Oh, Brian, said Kate, his mother. You guessed our surprise. We're all going to the circus this afternoon. Alf jumped up. Yeah, I think I like the circus too. He pointed to the TV set. All those extra large pussy cuts. Kate took Alf into the kitchen to talk to him. Now, Alf, you know you can't go to the circus with us. Everyone will wonder who or what you are. Kate could see that the little alien's feelings was hurt. She gave him a hug. I have an idea, she said. You can make your favorite everything on a pizza while we're gone. Just promise not to mess up the kitchen. I mean, the whole house. I've watched, watched as the turners leave. He was annoyed. This is unfair to aliens, he said to himself. Earthlings have all the fun. Hmm. I don't need them to take me. I'll check out this circus thing by myself. I can be back before Kate and Willie come home. Alf borrowed one of Brian's jackets and slipped out the back door. So you ain't gonna put no pants on? Yeah, nah, homie. You are here pantsless. <laughs> Alf followed a crowd of people to the circus entrance. The popcorn... Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just over here. Let me go back. I remember he just he just grabbed the jacket, so I, I'm gonna have it on point now. Al followed a crowd of people to the circus entrance. The popcorn and cotton candy smelled wonderful. Suddenly a girl stopped him. Hey little fellow, that's some costume. I think you want the other entrance. Wow, petty that God. This man says you got to be part of the circus. Got to be. So he he points to the stage entrance. Al saw a cloud a tall clown. With orange hair and long green shoes opening the door. No problem, Alf said to the guard. That must be where all the best looking people go in. No, no. I know y'all see that sad stage entrance. He, can he not read? Circus, stage entrance? I mean, he know he at the circus. Alf found himself backstage. Never had he heard such noises or seen such excitement. All around him were people with funny painted faces and glistering clothes. A baby, feet, a baby elephant wiggled his trunk at Alf. Alf wiggled his nose at the elephant. Hey, the Alf said Alf happily. You remind me of my cousin. The ringmaster, however, was not happy about anything. He was groaning and moaning. 
The head, the head clock clown is sick, he cried. The show can't go on without him. What will we do? We're ruined. And just then, the, right, the ringmaster spouted out. Oh, thank goodness, laughed the ringmaster. The substitute clown has finally arrived. All right, get him into his costume and be quick about it. Then he hurried away through the animals and cheering performers. Okay, what, what's, what's going on? How do you just make him a... The ringmaster... Hold on. Whoop, the head clown... Okay, the head clown is sick. So then you just this, you just made him the replacement head at head at one. Okay. We're so glad to make it. We're so glad you made it in time. Said the class. Said the clown Alf. Sorry, you didn't have time to get out of your other costume first. What other costume? This this ain't no costume. So now he got to stay. Y'all just. This is sorry you couldn't get out your other costume, and now he's just gonna perform it. Okay, y'all just gonna get one book. The circus parade marched into the area. The ponies pranced. The clowns tumbled, the wild animals roared. The ringmaster waved proudly to the audience. Everyone cheered. Alf could sense the excitement. This was much more fun than making a pizza. Alf could see children laughing and pointing at him. Everyone was clapping and waving. He realized he was a star. No, you're not. Wow, thought Alf. I could get used to this. I'm sorry. I'm going to show y'all the picture. He's just riding the thing. No. Okay, baby. Okay, Shotty Willie, as he points to the car chariot. Isn't that amazing? There's the clown who looks a little, no, a lot like Alf. Brian stared hard at the little clown. Then he smiled and smiled. Brian knew. Alf's chariot stopped in the center ring. The ringmaster bent down and spoke to Alf. Quick, fella, what's your name? Alf thought for a moment. Then he mumbled to the ringmaster. The ringmaster stood up tall and spoke into the microphone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, introducing the great Alfonso. And, the, and while the drums rolled, the ringmaster led out the great Alfonso over to a big springboard. He pointed, sit here. Alf had seen children playing on seesaws. It looked fun, so he sat. All of a sudden, Alf was up in the air. Whoa! What's happening? Swoosh. So, Buddy jumped on the, the other clown jumped on the thing. Now he's swinging through the air. He being an acrobat. He's an acrobat. He an acrobat. He an opera, you know what I'm saying? Everything had happened so quickly. Hey, said Alf. Next time, give me a little warning. I need time to practice being a bird. The party, the pretty chopper leans artist gave off a big hug. You are wonderful, she said. And now, jump. She took Alf's hand and they soared again, this time down to the safety net. They bounced like rubber balls. The crowd clapped and chilled. Hooray for the great Alfonso, they shouted. The ringmaster shook Alf's hand and said, Bravo, you were magnificent. The flying Fafenzos, Falconies always start their act with that routine. They believe it's good luck. They wouldn't have gone on tonight without the head clown on the springboard. You saved the, you saved the show, Alfonso. Yay! The tanners, the tanners arrived home after the, from the circus. The first thing they saw was Alf on the sofa. Alf said, "Willie, you look so tired. What have you been up to?" The next thing they saw was a pizza. "Oh look!" cried Lin Lennon. "Alf, did you make that all by yourself?" "Alf, it looks so clean. Why, there's not even a crumb. How did you manage to make a pizza without making a mess?" He bought it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What else I'm showing y'all pictures at? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me hurry up. It was funny though. It was funny. I liked it. Be like, so please, you showed your receipts at the end. I'm sorry. That's life. Yo, let's eat that out. You never know what I went through to get get this piece of done in time. 